I'm Peter Block at ACC 2019 in New Orleans. Uh, TAVR, transcatheter valve replacement, has taken center stage here. Uh, we've talked about the partner trials with Marty Leon. Now to my left is Mike Reardon from Houston, and he's been the maitre d' of the Evolute series. So a number of trials using, quote unquote, the other valve, yeah. but in fact, there are two valves that are dissimilar but do the same job. Mike, this is an exciting time. It's truly an exciting time. You know, we have, Peter, run a series of trials on both sides, going across the entire spectrum of risk. We finally made it to low risk where we thought we might have a hard time matching surgery. Both trials beat surgery. This will lead to a seismic shift in how we approach these patients. Right. And in fact, they beat surgery by a significant amount. It was a non-inferiority trial, wasn't it, Mike? Well, it was a non-inferiority trial, and we chose for our endpoint all-cause mortality and disabling stroke at two years, so we thought this would be more objective and impactful. And, and indeed, it is a, a more injective, impactful endpoint, but we also agree with the partner endpoint that, that hospitalization is important. And in fact, if we add hospitalization to ours, we reach superiority over surgery too. And so, you know, as long as surgery wins at mortality and stroke, then hospitalization did not, was not the determining factor. Yeah, as I looked at these data, Mike, I was particularly struck by the stroke issue, right? Yeah. We all expected maybe there would be more stroke with the Taverside. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think I didn't expect more stroke. I think if you follow from partner 1A, which was where it had a word, it's been going down ever since. What I was shocked at is, is the astoundingly low rate, really in both arms. I mean, we're almost reaching a rate where if you took a 74-year-old and put him in a room for a year, that's what you'd expect. Yeah, and in fact, the surgery was also very good, wasn't it? The surgery in both of these trials was not just good, it was superb. Right. You could not beat this surgery. So both these trials had an extremely strong comparator arm. Okay, so I'm gonna put Mike on the carpet here in just a second and say, look, you're a cardiac surgeon and you're doing this trial with TAVR, and now all of a sudden you're faced with a very different, I hate the word, paradigm. What's your response to that? Well, I'd say I'm a surgeon, but I treat patients. And so I have to think about what's best for my patient. And this data shows me that at least in this low risk group we treated, TAVR wasn't just an alternative, it was the preferred treatment. So going forward, when I see a patient, if they're a candidate for a bioprosthetic valve, TAVR has to be in the conversation or we're not doing true informed consent and true shared decision making. Not everybody's gonna get a TAVR. Surgeons are not gonna go away. You will still need a good surgeon, so keep them close, but it's gonna fundamentally shift how we approach these patients. Right, one last question for you because perhaps there will be people out there who will say, well, everyone will get a TAVR. And that's just simply not true because if you're 45 and have a bicuspid valve, what are you going to get, Mike? We're well, going to get a mechanical valve because, again, even without TAVR, before the days of TAVRs, the decision is mechanical or biologic. Right. If it's, the decision is mechanical, you should still get a mechanical valve. Yeah. So surgeons aren't going to go away, but this, I think, is going to be a seismic shift the way we at least approach our patients. Informed consent is going to be changed. Absolutely. And the conversations will be different, and that's all good. It's all good. This is, it's for our patients, it's great. For surgeons that get on board and learn how to do this, you'll triple your work. There you go. Thank you, Mike.